In this section on representations of functions, our objective is to be able to represent relations and functions using concrete, verbal, numeric, graphic, and algebraic forms. Let's begin with translating English, or verbal, to algebra. In other words, what do we write when we see these words? The English or the verbal, we might see the word domain or each element in the domain. We will write X. Similarly, when we see range or each element in the range, we write Y. One half of each element in the domain, well, I see domain, so I think of x, one half of that, I write one half x. A number can be represented by any variable, such as n for number, or x for a number in the domain, or g, any random letter twice a number or a number doubled. Twice or doubled means two times that number. So if I'm going to use n for number, then I'm going to write twice that number as 2n. If I used x, I would write 2x. If I used g, I would write 2g, so on and so forth. One third of a number, again, if I'm calling the number n, one third of n looks like that, seven more than h, or seven added to h. We're gonna start with what's getting added to, the h, and then added is the plus, or more than is the plus, and then seven. Seven less than g, or seven subtracted from g or g subtracted by 7 look like this g subtract by 7 or I'm subtracting from g so I'm starting with g 7 minus g is telling you exactly what to write 7 minus g same is equal we put the equal symbol the square of a number is n, remember n for number, squared. Let's try some examples. Complete the table by translating either English to algebra or algebra to English. Three less than each element in the domain. So I'm starting with the element in the domain Less than means subtract, and then I'm subtracting three. Maybe you pause the video, try some of these, and come back and check how you did. Each element in the range is equal to, so is equal to, all of that means equal. Each element in the range, we think of y, one, less than half of each element in the domain. So I think of x for that. So let's start with each element in the range is equal to y equal to. Let's go ahead and color code this. y and then y for each element in the range. If you have colors, it's a good idea to use them too is equal to, is that equal symbol, half of something, so half of each element in the domain, so half of the x, and then I'm doing one less than. So I think of less than is subtract, one is the number one. So minus one, less than that half of the element in the domain. 
sometimes it's helpful to write what the symbols are near those words. Let's try another one. Y is the same as, that's an equal, one half of a number X, so we're told to call it X, and then minus one. So let's begin, Y is the same as one half of a number X minus one. Notice that yields the exact same equation as the previous one, just said in a slightly different way. Let's see how we can translate the other way. I'm going to start with an equation and then go back to the verbal or the English. How do I say this part? Y is, and then how do I say this part? Two times something, I can literally say two times something, or I can say twice X, or twice an element in the domain, but what I also see that I have is plus five. So when I see that, I might start by saying five more than, and then I can go to what I'm taking more than, twice a number in the domain or twice a number X for short. There are a lot of different ways to say these. Let's try another. Three more than, so I'm going to be adding three to something, the square of a number. So remember what that can look like? I can write N squared or X squared. When they don't tell me where the number's from, the domain or range, I can make it anything I want. So N squared, three more than that, plus three. Let's look at putting a little bit more of these together and filling out a table. So Y is, Y is, four subtracted from. So if I'm subtracting from something, that's minus four. Half of each element in the domain. I see domain, I think X. So I'm going to start with half of X, and then I'm going to subtract four from that. Now that I've translated it into an equation, I'm going to fill out the table. I'm going to take each X value and plug it into this equation. For example, the first X value says two. I'm going to say Y is half of, plug in the two, minus four. See how the two is the X, so the two goes in there. Half of two makes one, and one minus four makes negative three. So two is the input, negative three is the output. Now I could do this for each one, or I could show you a slightly faster way by going to my calculator. In my calculator, I go to Y equals, and I plug in what I got for what Y equals. One half is one divided by two, X minus four. And then I go to my table, second table. I want the X values, four, six, eight, and 10. So I'm gonna scroll down to see four gives me negative two. So I'm going to write that in my table, four, negative two. Let's see what else. Six, negative one, six, negative one. Next, eight, gives zero and 10 gives one.
let's take a look at translating graphs to tables and algebra. Example number one, part A. Consider the graph of the function. So we're noticing this graph. We might look at some places where this line crosses through the grid lines, such as here, or here, or here, or here. These are specific integral coordinates, integral points on the graph. Let's complete the table according to that graph. The y is negative 1. What x value goes with negative 1? If the y-axis is here, down is negative 1. So I'm going to go over and see what point is that. That's 1, 2, 3, 4 to the negative side. That's negative 4. When we fill out a table, we move from left to right, lowest x value to highest x value. So the next x value that I see, the next point that I see, the next integral point, is at negative 2. Negative 2 goes with the y value 0, because it goes up 0. Next is the x value 0. At x is 0, y is 1. Next, moving from left to right, this point is at 2 and up on the y-axis, 2. And finally, x is 4, this point right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, the y is 1, 2, 3. That's the y value, 3, 4, 3. Let's choose the correct algebraic equation that matches this table of values and this graph. How could we do that? One way is to go to the calculator, try typing in each of these and see which one has a graph that looks like this or has a table that looks like this. Let's start by going to y equals, clear what we did before, and we'll start by trying the first one, y equals 2x minus 1. I'm typing what I see here. So I can go to a table and I can see negative 4 for the x. I have to scroll up a little bit. Negative 4 gives negative 9. I know that it's supposed to give negative 1, so right away I know that that first choice is not the correct answer. If I go to the graph by clicking zoom and then 6 for a standard picture and I compare it to the graph that I see here, I notice that this is a steeper line than this is. So another way to tell that the first choice is not correct. Going through all of the choices, I eventually find that choice D is correct. Let's see how. I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to clear what's there and type 1 divided by 2 times x plus 1. Let's go to the table of values and compare that first. Negative 4 gives me negative 1. Negative 2, 0 is my next point. Yeah, I see that. 0, 1, I see that. 2, 2, yep, and 4, 3. Very good. Let's take a look at the graph. Zoom, 6, and compare that picture. And I see that line looks very much like this line. Of course, the table of values is a better way to compare. Let's write a list of ordered pairs using the graph or table. So here is what we did before. I find it easiest to use the table. So the first value for x, negative 4, and the corresponding y value, negative 1. Next order pair, negative 2, 0. 0, 1. 2, 2 and 4, 3. See, we can translate what we have into a variety of different organized representations. I put the set notation because this is a set of order pairs. Let's try writing a verbal translation 
of the function. So let's take a look at this to see how we're going to write it verbally. Y and then equals. I can say Y is, now I notice that I'm adding one at the end. So I'm going to say one more than, what is this right here? Half of X. So I can say half of a number X. Take a minute to write a short summary where you will compare the different representations of functions, such as verbal, algebra, graph, table, and ordered pairs. See you in class.